Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us here on our YouTube page for our worship service today. My name is Joe Lehman and I'm the worship and music director here at Mantra Zion United Methodist Church. We're happy that you've joined us. We're going to start off by singing a hymn of praise, Morning Has Broken. Good morning or afternoon or wherever you find yourself as you're listening to this online recorded worship for Mantra Zion United Methodist Church for Sunday, June 12th. A couple of announcements for us this morning. First, for Open M, we are again providing an Open M lunch on June 30th. If you would like to help support this lunch, we are accepting donations and those can be dropped off at the church at your earliest convenient convenience. We are also accepting for our monthly mission challenge, we are collecting encouragement cards for Open M that will be passed out to those clients that they feed at their facility. VBS registration is now open. You can find the link to register your little one for VBS. We are excited to have VBS at our church again on the week of July 11th. Please join me in a time of prayer. God of the dawn and dusk, we gather to hear the words of hope, to sing the songs that touch our hearts, to pray deeply and longingly for your presence. These things are given to us as a gift. We are all given gifts that we use in all areas of our lives. And as we reflect on these gifts this morning, we pray for your light to show us where we can use these gifts. Wisdom and knowledge to know how to strengthen them and discern what they are and what they aren't. We ask that the Holy Spirit, the great sustainer, Show us where we are meant to go and do, and when we are meant to help others use their own gifts. We can't do everything, but we can all do our part for your kingdom. As we go out into your world, to our homes, families, friends, and workplaces, help us remember those gifts we are given and that we are empowered to use them to make this world a better place. Send your Holy Spirit upon us today. 
Let the rushing wind of your spirit stir us up to action for good and healing. Let the flame of your power ignite our hearts with passion for justice and peace. And this morning we bring the names of people to prayer this day, asking for healing mercies. May we also add our names, asking for empowerment and renewal of our spirits. Take us and use our gifts and our talents for healing in your world. Help us to be bold in our proclamation of your great news of love and hope. And in all of these things, we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So when Jen asked me a few weeks ago to talk about my spiritual gifts, I'll admit I wasn't quite sure what my spiritual gifts are um, and wasn't real excited about talking in front of you about it because that, I don't feel like, is one of my spiritual gifts. But I took the spiritual gifts survey online through the United Methodist Church and found that my top three spiritual gifts are giving, healing, and faith. And I think these three go along very well with the way I grew up in the church with a mom who very much made it known to us that we were very blessed and should share the things that God has blessed us with with others. So with that I have tried to use my talents, use my spiritual gifts to help others and I think having the spiritual gift of healing is something that's played a huge role in my life. So my job is working as a pediatric hospital medicine doctor. So I work to take care of the kids who need to spend the night in the hospital here in Akron. And sometimes I'm using that spiritual gift to order tests and interpret those results and um, give medications. Sometimes I'm using that just to heal by explaining what's going on and giving them guidance about what I think is going to happen next. Sometimes that is through my work in our quality department, helping to try to make things better the next time around with guidelines and pathways and ways that we can improve the care that we give. And sometimes it's through teaching the next group of residents, uh, the next group of doctors that are coming through to help heal the children in our area. And I think then the other spiritual gift, the gift of faith, is one that has really been very important to me. Um, It has gotten me through a lot of really difficult times that knowing even when I don't understand why God's plan is what it is, knowing that God's in control and having that faith that he knows what's best and Um, It really is all part of his plan has been really helpful for me and I've tried to use my faith in God to help bless those around me and I think it's really been a a big benefit for me. Hi everyone, Uh, Pastor Bill asked me to uh, spend a couple minutes talking about uh, spiritual gifts um, and how I got them and how they play out in my life. Um, He pointed out that uh, he thought that my my food efforts, both at Grace Park and at the church, were something worthwhile, as well as um, apparently I have some humor. So anyway, as far as uh, the food goes, I don't think it's any great conspiracy. It's just something I kind of fell into. Um, when I first got serious about faith, when my wife and I 
started raising a family. Um, I was always looking to see how I could serve the Lord and see how the Holy Spirit was moving me. Uh, I've gone through different things. When we moved up here in 2011, uh, I went on one of the mission trips to Haiti and we got involved in uh, doing the microloan project. Um, that didn't work out too well. Um, the Haitian government wouldn't allow the uh, folks to go beyond just the city. So another opportunity sprung up. Uh, the previous youth pastor, Jen, was trying to get involved with that initiative at Grace Park. She asked me, uh, since both the kids were in the youth program, to participate. I thought it'd be great to get involved with the kids in some kind of outreach and, and uh, program. And so I got involved and it just kind of grew. Obviously the spirit moved me to get involved. And as time went on, uh, things became more elaborate. I upgraded the equipment. And there's a lot of times that, you know, like buying the food and the weather was bad and things like that always kind of made me feel tentative going into one of the Sundays. But um, like I talked to Bill one time, I said, you know, every time I think I'm, I, I just can't take much more of it, you know, I, I meet these folks and I meet them on this, this base level by giving them food and they're happy. And I always come away feeling a lot better. And I think that's the Holy Spirit working in my life. As far as uh, the humor aspect of it, um, my last name is Lubes. Uh, I did grow up in New York. And uh, one way you made it through childhood is either be a really good fighter or you'd be funny. So even when I wasn't a very church person, uh, I learned how to be funny to get out of a lot of tough scrapes. So I find that humor episode is a way to reach people that may be a little standoffish to you. And it's a way to kind of break the ice and get into conversations that have more meaning, like about Jesus and how their life is going. And just to share a little bit of soul to soul action. So that's my quick and dirty two minute ish summary. Uh, hope you liked it, and uh, hopefully I'll be doing the same thing live come Sunday. Thanks. Dear friends, uh, welcome to worship with us here online at Montrose Zion United Methodist Church. My name is Bill Liming. I'm the minister here. Um, have you ever woken up and the first thing in your mind is that you wake up just completely angry in the morning? I'm going to tell you that is a completely horrible way to start your day. I was reading an article on stress management and several months ago when I was having my own one heck of a Monday morning. And the eye-grabbing line was that more people die at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning of the work week than at any other time of the week. I think what was being replied was that with all the stress of life, sometimes a heavy work schedule ahead of us can be that one last little straw that breaks our backs. Now, reading further, they talked that more specifically that the rate of heart attack at Monday morning at 9 a.m. amongst both men and women um, dramatically increases in the morning hours, um, the traditional start of the work week. And as I read the article, my stomach was aching, my chest felt tight, I felt short of breath and was completely just feeling run down. And so I read further in the article and learned that each of our bodies is in a continual process um, of being remade. We have approximately 100 trillion cells um, in each of our bodies, and each of those cells are working in cooperation with one another. When they stop cooperating, we call that disease. And when they rebel against each other, well, the outcomes for our life tend not to be so great. I used to think the stress we experienced was just a mental thing. Um, we take external factors and our brains get to work to respond. Sometimes we respond in positive ways, like jumping out of the way of a moving car. And other times we respond in not so positive ways, like worrying and overthinking. And I'm guilty as charged as all of those. But as I read further in the article, our bodies have neurotransmitters throughout them. And those neurotransmitters aren't just up in our brains. And I learned that there are more neurotransmitters um, in our digestive tracts than there are in that central hub that we call our brain. That's remarkable. And perhaps explains why that not only do I worry with my brain, but oftentimes stress causes my stomach to hurt quite a bit as well. And most pointedly to this heart attack thing, that our, heart also, our full, hearts are also full of neurotransmitters. And the beating of our hearts can positively and negatively affect our moods. So that tightness in my chest is a bodily response to the life when it just feels overwhelming. But remember those 100 trillion or so cells that are inside of us. God, the amazing architect of these bodies, 
um, that we walk around in programmed each of our cells with a limited lifespan. That each of our cells are supposed to die, but then also be made new again in a continual process of little mini resurrections that are happening within us. For instance, in 30 days or so, our cells will, so have, our cells will have so replicated that we'll have an entirely new skin suit within 30 days to be walking around in. In the next year, most of our organs will be made completely new. And in the five years' time, there's an entirely new us from the cells that have died and the new cells that were born. And the amazing thing is that these new cells all share together all of the, what we were, of who we are, and also of who we are becoming in Christ's name. And that's a good thing so that we, every five years we aren't starting over brand new. But what the article did not address is the importance of being made new again in the Spirit. Because I think it is entirely possible to die a spiritual and a mental death long before our bodies give out. And I wonder if the interaction between the sickness of our souls and of our bodies does not contribute to those 9 a.m. heart attacks on Monday mornings. Perhaps the spiritual gas tank is run dry, and we just figure we can't afford to be refilled, or don't know where to fill back up again. I remember back when I had COVID for the first time, it was before we had even given it in the name here in the United States. And after Jim McCarger and uh, Cindy got me to the hospital over in Medina, um, beyond the 105 degree fever that I was having, beyond the blacking out, beyond my organ failure, I had this young doctor come into the room because I really was in the mood to hear his lecture. Um, he looked at my charts and he gave me a disapproving look. And he said that I had COPD and he accused me of being a lifelong pack a day smoker. Well, to be honest with you, I've not been a, the most healthy person in this life, um, in this world, um, but his description, description of me didn't fit either. He told me, he said, your lungs, he said, your lungs are ruined. My lungs were full of fluid. Apparently they looked like garbage, and I had, but I had no bacterial infection, so they couldn't attribute what was going on in my lungs to, to pneumonia and what was happening to me. And so after I was discharged from the hospital with my mystery illness, I was told I had about one-third of the lung capacity of a person my age. And so what did I do? I had to learn to breathe again. I used this little breathing tool the hospital sent home with me, and every hour I used that thing to try to take a deep breath ten times every hour and hold that as long as I possibly could. And over the next ten mo few months, I resulted in losing 15 pounds. Unfortunately, I found those 15 pounds again but I lost them just trying to learn to breathe again. And the God who loves us, that God remade my lungs. And the new cells, they remembered what they needed to do to find life. But it was up to my soul to find the answer beyond the disease of what I needed for my body more than just breath. And so with each breath, I said a little prayer. I said, Holy Spirit, come and breathe me into this body the life that I need, not just for my physical living, for my spiritual living as well. The Holy Spirit, friends, is a third person of the Trinity that often gets overlooked or taken for granted as much as we take our simple breathing for granted. We don't think much about our life-sustaining breath until we lose our breath. And we also take for granted that God is with us always to sustain this great gift of life, um, just as Christ promised to send us the Holy Spirit. That is what 1 John tells us, that we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us because of that spirit that is sent to us. And friends, by choosing to breathe in life and literally choosing to breathe in the Holy Spirit to our existence, we can be remade, both physically and spiritually. We live in a world, I think, that needs to be remade. The cells that have died amongst us must be made new. And there are days in which our gas tank for life can feel woefully empty. It is then that I realize perhaps I'm filling up with the wrong fuel. It's the Holy Spirit that can and will sustain this life of ours, however. Now back years ago, it seems like another lifetime ago, back when I ran cross country in high school, in the middle of the race, I was always afraid to give my very all. I didn't want to run out of breath, I didn't want to run out of gas, I didn't want to collapse and not have the energy to make it across the finish line. So I always kept a little something back to make sure I had enough. And I learned to rely on other things besides the Holy Spirit. Things in life that frankly only fail us. 
And then I come across as an adult passages in my morning devotion that throw me for a total loop spiritually. Passages like when Jesus tells a rich young man to go and give away everything that he owns, to completely empty himself, to, to sell it, to give it all away, and once he was empty, to come and be refilled and find life in Christ's name. Now, as we all know, the, the rich young man, he doesn't do what Jesus tells him, and he doesn't follow, because he still was filling his life in his gas tank full of things that ultimately didn't matter. He still didn't trust in Jesus alone for his life. He still thought his stuff would fill his tank and get him where he needed to go. Friends, I think that is an easy and regretfully common mistake that many of us make. So again, back in my teenage years, I relied on that reserve tank that I kept in the, in the back of my mind to get me through my cross-country races, my reserve breath to get me across the finish line. Now in my 40s, that reserve tank looks a little differently. I used to think my family was going to be the source of my happiness. I should have learned that it was not true growing up, that my happiness was not my parents' responsibility. And frankly, to expect anyone to make me happy puts an undue burden on anyone. And when my tank is empty, when family strife is high, what I need to do is to learn to take a deeper breath and to breathe in not just oxygen, but to breathe the Holy Spirit into my life and to pray, Lord, help us. Holy Spirit, help us to be made new. And when the stock market crashed back in 2009 and my retirement dreams kind of took a hit, and then I got a divorce um, a few years later, and that again, my dreams took another hit uh, with stock cr crashing again. There are days in which it feels like our dreams are even dying. But then I hear Jesus come and say to me, the dream of following me is not dead, and it's always available to you. It just might be that relying on all the wrong stuff um, is what really has killed a lot of my dreams. But in the power of the Holy Spirit, friends, let us breathe in a new dream for the future, and a new dream in which we can let go of all of the things that we thought would be the, the things that would sustain us, and instead come and follow Christ just as he had always asked of us. And remember, God is always with us, and the Holy Spirit will never let us down will always be there to help us sustain life. So as a teenager running across fields and valleys and hills, and even now as an adult, there are days in which we might feel weak. There are days in which we stumble and we fall. And there on the ground, our minds tell us, perhaps we just don't have the energy to pick ourselves back up again. Perhaps our minds tell us we just can't go any further. Our bodies have already given out. Perhaps then we will learn to start relying on what truly has given us life from the beginning. Perhaps then we learn to breathe again and never take another single breath for granted. For we breathe in this Holy Spirit. And so, Holy Spirit, lift us up on wings like eagles and let us run with faith and never grow weary in your name.